Time to go. I'm staying in Hamilton tonight. There's no problem. What are you doing here? <laughs> I need a ride too. Good morning. Good morning, Lilith. Did you enjoy yourself last night? Always. I'd say it was a success, wouldn't you? I'd say. Did you sleep well? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did too. I found since I quit drinking, I sleep much better. I wouldn't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. Why are you up so early? I received a phone call I thought you should know about. Huh? Anything important? It seems Katie Morrow was in an accident last night. Adorno, you know we invested heavily in Katie. I know. She's not your average Pop-Tart. It's too bad it didn't work out. It happens. Well, 
With stardom comes power and influence. You know that. I don't think you understand. Things did not proceed as planned. Which part? None of it. What do you mean? There was an accident. They all died. Except Katie. Katie's alive. She is. She's in serious condition, but she is alive. Where is she? Hamilton. I see. Where was it to take place? Her lake house. Do you think she caught on? Well, how should I know? We need to clean this up. Henry was in that car. We need to have his information redacted from the police report. Who do we have in Hamilton? No need. There's a woman. Alicia Gazzara. She has a copy. Apparently, she's an investigative journalist with the Hamilton Herald. Ugh, I hate small towns. That's not all. Katie and this Alicia were close, apparently. I'm assuming Alicia and the entire town will take an interest in this. Oh, well, it looks like all the stars aligned for Katie Morrow. It's too bad I'm going to have to unalign them. I'll consult with my people about preparing an official story for the media. I think Alicia Gazzara might have a different story, my dear. Oh, of course. Hello, Alicia Gazzara, Bumblefuck Hamilton. Welcome to the rabbit hole. She missed another meeting this morning. I hope everything's okay. I'm gonna talk to her. The elections are coming up, and I'm going to be really busy. I can't do my job if she doesn't do hers. Understand? Is she still covering the Red, White, and Blueberry Festival meetings? Yeah. Did I leave my Lake Water Quality Committee folder in your office? You did, yeah. I made some additional notes. And I think you should include interviews with the Lake residents. I want to know their opinions. Good idea. Our report from the email office. I already got it. I was up early. Did you know Katie Morrow was in a car crash early this morning? You just heard about it. The chamber meeting you missed? Come on in when you're ready. She was up early? Stayed up late is more like it. Go over my notes. The main issue seems to be the lowering of the length and whether it's not necessary. Which month? How many feet? Duration? I don't think some of the lake residents are happy about it. Did you find out why? I'm on it. Hi, Rusty. Hey, Gianna. About Katie's accident, I was wondering if I could work on this today. I've been researching the passengers and something doesn't add up. What's up? Well, the three men that were in the car with Katie all died. Katie's the only survivor. Okay. Well, one of the guys, the guy in the passenger seat, Henry Lee Lucas, he was a self-confessed convicted serial killer. Are you serious? And John DeBauer, who was in the back seat with Katie, he was heir to the global pharmaceutical giant B&B Enterprises. I haven't gotten to the third guy yet. Well, maybe he's a lion that needs some courage. I'm sorry. The serial killer thing just struck me as being a little far-fetched. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. I'd really like to keep working on this. Katie and I used to be really close. Yeah, I remember. You were friends with Katie Morrow? Katie Morrow was born and raised here. I know that. Everybody knows that. I just didn't think we'd be friends. No, I just... You just what, Gianna? I just didn't think you two were the same age. Thanks. Alicia, I didn't mean it like that. I think your relationship with Katie is a good thing. Just be sure to work with someone that could double check your research, that's all. I don't need help with my research. You can look up the names yourself. Here's the police report. No, I trust your research. You just weren't yourself last week. So I thought collaborating with someone in the beginning might be helpful until you get your life back on track. It's unprofessional to bring up a coworker's personal life during a meeting, Gianna. 
It's unprofessional to skip meetings and expect others to do the work for you. I don't expect anything, especially from a 22-year-old who can't even begin to understand what I was going for. All right. Let's move on. Rusty, I'm going to go call my aunt. She works at the hospital. That might be helpful. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Rusty, I need this story. I can do this. The Morrows were like a second family to me. No one else has my connections to this family. This is personal. This is Katie's story. And a lot of people in this town are interested in it already. Your research has to be spot on. My research is always spot on. So, Katie's in serious condition, and the other three male passengers are definitely dead. My aunt also said that it's a really weird scene at the hospital. A lot of out-of-towners wearing black and carrying two phones. Thanks, Jan. Thanks again for covering the chamber meeting this morning. Appreciate it. No problem. Let me know if you need help with anything else. Rusty, my research is meticulous. I worked at one of the best newspapers in Philadelphia. Not anymore. You work here now and you've barely been doing that lately. Last week was difficult for me for personal reasons, but that's all over and back on track. Last week? You were late more than once. You missed a chamber meeting and you missed two deadlines. And I also noticed that you left early on Friday to go to Anada. Friday was my worst day. That's not who I am. I should have taken a mental health day. Yeah, well, when you're at work, I need you to be focused. Hamilton turns 150 in March and we're gonna get busier than usual covering events. We were just asked by the Kiwanis Club to do a story on this commemorative blanket. Rusty, please, let me do this story on Katie. I feel inspired and I haven't felt this way in a while. I can't write about a fucking blanket! I need a story that will give me back my focus and this is it. You know why I heard you back, Alicia? It wasn't charity. You have the credentials, but if I give you Katie's story and you mess it up, that'll be your last chance. I won't mess this up, you have my word. It's all in the past. I won't let you down, I promise. <sighs> let me think about it. Well, can I at least stop by later to show you what I've done so far? Yeah, it'd be fine. Passenger number one, the driver, General Mitchell Black, retired Army intelligence officer who specialized in psychological operations, wrote a book titled Silent Weapons for Silent Wars, which lays out a step-by-step -step plan to conquer the world through propaganda, currency devaluation, economic shock, and constant warfare. His second book, was titled Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll, How the Aquarian Conspiracy Killed the American Family. His third book was titled A Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, The Fabian Society, Tavistock, and the Beatles. He also co-wrote the Satanic Bible. Sounds like a nice guy. Easy going. Passenger number two, back seat, John DeBauer IV billionaire heir to the family pharmaceutical fortune B&B Enterprises worth about $26 billion. 
personal net worth, an estimated $1 billion. Founded the charity World Vision Global Foundation, which is currently under investigation for a food for sex scandal in Haiti. He has been described as a jet setter who enjoys polo, playmates, and philanthropy. Wow. Passenger number three, Henry Lee Lucas, passenger seat, a self-confessed serial killer. He was sentenced to between 20 to 40 years imprisonment for killing his mother. While in custody, he confessed to over 60 murders. Some of his alleged treatment was odd for someone whom the police believed to be a cunning mass murderer. He was rarely handcuffed, often allowed to wander police stations and jails at will, and even knew the codes to the security doors. He also confessed to being a professional assassin and that his murders were not random, just made to look that way. He was pardoned one week before he was scheduled to be executed by then governor of Texas, George W. Bush, who had his death sentence commuted to life in prison. Besides murder, he was involved with a satanic cult called the Hand of Death Cult. He was also friends with Otis Toole, the serial killer who confessed to murdering Adam Walsh. And not one news outlet to date has even mentioned his name. And literally, every article I've read online, these guys are mentioned as the other passengers. I can't figure it out. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but this. We have to consider all the possibilities. And it might be true that the rich and powerful entities in Hollywood want this to go away because Katie's new movie comes out soon. Passenger number four, Catherine Heather Morrow, back seat. Hamiltonian, former Blueberry Queen, University of the Arts graduate, Broadway actress, and soon to be international movie star when her film, The Supernatural Secrets of Big Business Success, is released on Halloween. Okay. So, most likely, these guys were taking Katie to her house. Was she commuting to New York City? She could have. New York's only 90 miles from here. And yet a world away. So, where were they coming from? That's the question. We could ask Joe Boy to check the GPS. Good idea. Why were these four people in the same car? That's what you're gonna find out. Thank you. I won't let you down. I've been up all night working on this. Good tell. It's <laughs> impressive. Good job. Well, it's getting late. You must be exhausted. Let's call it a day. Maybe we could grab lunch tomorrow and begin to wrap our heads around all this. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Healthy lunch would be fine. A nod at one? Sounds good. Rusty, thanks again. It means the world to me that you gave me this story, especially after the week I've had. I matched the right person with the right story. I thought you were perfect for this. I'm ready for bed. <laughs> Jersey doing home. Back to find your roots. Sure. <laughs> I really wanted to see Katie, but they wouldn't let me in. So sad. Yeah, Brennan's off this weekend. Have you guys met? We have not met. Big fan. Oh, really? Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> what happened last weekend? Pulled the fly gang a little earlier, right? Yeah, they threw the caution uh, before I took the lead, so ended up getting third. Criminal. Criminal. <laughs> well, it'd be great to get an interview before you go. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm leaving town, so you might miss me. Next right. time. We'll nice, see you. Time. nice to see everybody. Hey, nice to meet you. Thank you. Really? Hi. Everybody okay. doing? Nice to meet you. You too. Get that subscription back, right? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
interesting. Anything new? Still no mention of the pastor's identities anywhere. How Henry Lee Lucas is in front page news is beyond me. Actually, I lost sleep over that guy. People like that live in a parallel universe and rarely come in contact with the little people. What do you mean? Have you ever crossed paths with an international playboy billionaire from one of the most elite families on earth? Or a former army intelligence officer and published author? Or a convicted murderer who spent most of his life in jail? No, I wouldn't want to. Well, Lucas is a whole other story. It's just intriguing that somehow they were in Katie's circle. It's difficult for me to believe that Katie would willingly go anywhere with men like that. We're in the big leagues now where the rules don't apply. In what way? What did everyone in that car have in common? They were either rich, powerful, or connected. Don't forget dirty. Oh, that goes without saying. My mom used to say, if you see a rich man, you better believe he stepped on a whole bunch of people to get there. I don't believe that. I know a lot of well-off people who live in this town and who do a lot for this community. They're not the people I'm talking about. The people we know are average people who were smart with their money. I'm talking about the very rich and the very wealthy and the very well-connected people that we peasants never come in contact with. They own billion-dollar companies and don't pay taxes and live above the law and control just about everything on this planet. Now you sound like a conspiracy theorist. I'm the opposite of a conspiracy theorist. I'm a realist. Let me ask you something. Do you believe that anyone with any real power is a good person? Well, I prefer not to make blanket statements. The answer is no. Oh, and how are you so sure? Look at the world we live in. It's evil. And the fish rots from the head down. Here's the thing, I don't blame them. Most people can't think for themselves. So they're just begging to be taken advantage of. That's why our medium is so powerful. And why we need to be so careful with this story. Do any specials? Hi, June. How are you? Hey, I'm good, Rusty. Uh, we have eggplant parm today. I'll take that and an iced tea with lemon. Thanks. Same. Thanks, Joe. You got it. So, in your opinion, those men were in Katie's social circle. Or she knew who they were. Look at the Epstein case. People from all different walks of life were connected to that guy. So what are you trying to say? There must be a connecting factor that we're missing. We should check to see if John DeBauer invested in any of Katie's movies. If that's the case, then she could have been taking him back to her place. Oh, come on. Katie never struck me as that type. Look what came out with Weinstein. A lot of women felt they had no option. They either slept with the producer or never worked again. It's crazy. If supposedly his behavior was well known in Hollywood, yet they were complicit. The casting couch has been around forever. Doesn't make it right. Oh, I know. Another thing, Katie's not super famous yet, but she will be when the film is released, so we gotta get the story out by then. Her film is set to be released on Halloween. Mm -hmm. I feel like I stepped into the Twilight Zone. I know. I don't want this story to read like some crazy conspiracy theory that makes me look ridiculous. Facts are facts. The truth is the truth. Does the truth still exist in our business? It does, and it always will. The truth is what actually happened, period. Not sure how far into Lucas's criminal past I should go. Do I mention the satanic cult thing? Or what about the general co-writing the satanic Bible? What's up with that? I'd rather play up the rich and powerful DeBauer family and Katie, the movie star. Let me think about it. Enlisting Lucas's entire rap sheet isn't necessary. How does someone like that even get pardoned? I don't know. He signed a confession. Why would a future president of the United States and someone from such a 
prominent political family pardoned someone like that? He wasn't actually pardoned. His sentence was commuted to life in prison instead of the death penalty because they couldn't prove that the one murder for which he was sentenced to death was actually committed by him. Okay, I feel better now. <laughs> so when are you going to talk to Kitty's family? I'm going first thing in the morning. Good. See what information you can find out from Peter. Maybe she got in with a bad group. Maybe something as simple as that. Drugs. That was an issue before. True. The whole thing could have been a drug deal gone bad. The drug world makes strange bedfellows. Mr. Morrow. Alicia, it's been a long time. How have you been? I'm so sorry about Katie. How is she? She's improving. Uh, the surgery went well yesterday. That's good news. Yeah. So, I, I hear you're back in town working at the Herald? Yep. I've been here almost six months. <laughs> good for you. I like it when the young choose to bring their talents back to town. It's good to be home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Katie bought a home here. We love having her so close. Yeah, I heard. We've just never crossed paths. <laughs> Until now? Yeah. So, um, will the uh, Herald be writing a story about the accident? I think so. You've probably had a ton of media interest, right? Not really. Who are all these people? I'm not sure. I mean, supposedly, Katie's manager sent them. Makes sense. Not much else does. Hey, Eddie. Um, hey. Alicia, this is Katie's friend, Eddie. I haven't seen you in forever. Yeah. Where have you been? I've been working in Philly the past seven years. Oh, cool. I heard you were back in town. Yep. Started to work at the Herald about six months ago. Mm. Cool. You, uh, you writing a story about Katie? Yeah, most likely. So I... Heard you got the band back together. How's that going? It's great. Yeah, we uh, we never broke up though. We just took a hiatus. Our drummer went into rehab. So. Did you find a new drummer? No. No, Andy's back now. He's great. He, uh, he's actually expecting a baby the next few months. Oh, great. What else have you been up to? You know, uh, schedule's pretty packed actually. We uh, just play it out everywhere we can and play vinyl every Friday night. Uh, got a pretty big gig there coming up for their 150th celebration. Oh. Everyone has their own definition of success. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. You know, I find it uh, kind of funny you're the one writing the story about Katie. Yeah, we were close. I just hope I can give Katie the story she deserves. Um, listen, uh, Alicia, well, we should talk, okay? But, but not here. Let me give you my card. Um, give me a call tomorrow if you get a minute. Come on. You sing to her? Yeah. Maybe I'll catch up vinyl. Cool. Peter, I gotta go. I will call you tomorrow, I promise. I appreciate that. I really would. I'll talk soon. Take care. Well, hello. Hey, Jack, can we meet? I miss you too. I want to talk to you about Katie Morrow. That's so crazy. Did you read my piece today? I doubt she'll ever be the same. I did read it, and I have some questions. Can we meet tomorrow? Actually, I can probably meet you tomorrow. I'll be passing Hamilton on my way from the shore. I'll text you when I leave. Good? Let's meet at the lake. I like it. See you then, doll. Rosie.
getting paid, many ways to make a bill flip, money on my mind plus the grind, gotta deal with, close to the edge, never push cause I will flip, I ain't with the fuss, quit the noise, hit the kill switch, road to getting paid, many ways to make a bill flip, money on my mind plus the grind, gotta deal with, close to the edge, never push cause I will flip, I ain't with the fuss, get the noise, hit the kill switch, road to getting paid, many ways to make a bill flip, money on my mind plus the grind, gotta deal with, close to the edge, never push cause I will flip, I ain't with the fuss, get the noise, hit the kill switch. God, I miss those boots. How's the drum? Great. How's the Herald? Temporary. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You're too good to be writing stories about tumbleweeds. Why didn't your article on Katie's accident include any of the passengers' identities? Uh, well, you're right. It mostly revolved around Katie Morrow. That's correct. Why not cover everyone equally? Because not everyone is equal. Come on, Jack. It wasn't an in-depth investigative report, if that's what you mean. We didn't get into every detail of the passengers' lives. Katie Morrow suffers major head and back injuries in car crash. Yeah, that'll get your attention. There were three other people in the vehicle, including the driver, and according to the police report, all three were pronounced dead at the scene. Names of the deceased will not be released until their families are contacted. Well, it's important to be sensitive, take into account those families' feelings. Bullshit, I know you better than that, Jack. The article goes on to mention Katie's new film, her alcohol and drug-induced past, and her rumored affair with her co-star. And you end with some random doctor stating that she could have permanent brain damage. What the fuck do you even know who was in that car with her? That's what people want to read. She's even lucky I said that much. Her name doesn't sell papers. It might sell the Hammonds and Herald, but... Did you even research those men? <sighs> Where is this going? Henry Lee Lucas? I couldn't verify his information. He was a convicted murderer, Jack. Would a person like that even have reliable identification? He wasn't carrying identification. He was fingerprinted at the scene. Didn't I read that he was pardoned? I also read that he confessed to being a professional assassin, a member of the Hand of Death cult mm -hmm. that was associated with kidnapping, human trafficking, and Satanism? What the fuck was Katie doing with that guy? I also read that his confessions were mostly hoaxes. The guy was a pathological liar. I also read that his treatment in prison was highly unusual. He was allowed to, he was allowed to roam around the jail. And he knew the codes to the security doors? Oh yeah? Where'd you read that? Wikipedia? Come on, Alicia. Then, Bush commutes his sentence to life in prison. Why? Bush was a big proponent of the death penalty while he was governor of Texas. Bush looked at the evidence and realized that the guy was lying about the murder he was sentenced to die for. His confessions were mostly lies. You can't sentence someone to death for lying. Or did certain people want to keep him around a little longer and use him as their personal hitman? That's crazy talk. You know a hell of a lot more than what you put in this article. I miss seeing you at work every day. Did you get work done? Because you look incredible. No, I can't afford to get any work done. Do you know this woman named Gianna? She sent me her resume. She's the worst. I'm always fixing her shit. Really? Yeah. My next stop is New York City. Can't wait to get the fuck out of here. The Big Apple. Any offers? Not yet. Maybe this story will get me noticed. <laughs> yeah, it'll get you noticed, all right. Aren't you getting any good assignments here? And Hamilton? Hamilton. Right. Jack, is there something you're not telling me? I know you. Why are you ignoring the most bizarre facts about this story? Look, your mind is an overdrive, okay? I get it. You're stuck here in this small town, you've had a hell of a year, and you're going stir crazy. I get it. But take it from a fellow writer all work and no play? Makes Jack a dull boy. I'm not crazy, Jack. I just think this story is news. I don't. Stop gaslighting me. I'm not gaslighting you. Alicia, stop. OK? You need a work environment that's going to that's gonna guide your intuition, not confuse it. Don't let these basic people insist that you write them a sensational story just because they're bored with their lives. You're too good for that. If you want to make it in New York, you're going about it the wrong way. Get smart. I just don't get it. Look, I gotta go, okay? Don't let this story 
Screw up your chances for New York. If no other news outlet is making a big deal out of it, there must be a reason. What's the reason? Let it go. Do you understand? Let it go. Trust me on this one. It's the movie star. Where have you been all night? Swimming with the sharks. Oh, hope you're a good swimmer. I learned from the best. <laughs> so you came to a costume party dressed as yourself? This, my friend, is one of the most important uniforms in history. If not for us, the world would be a much different place. We, we were agents of change. That's one way of putting it. We made people love their servitude by providing a painless concentration camp full of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And you are proud of that? Yeah, I'm proud of my role in history. It's not my fault people are stupid. It's survival of the fittest out there, baby. The fittest or the trickiest? Why so glum? You're going to be super famous. You should feel empowered. I don't feel so empowered. Don't sound so ungrateful. You were chosen to be part of the plan. Art is very powerful. Is it art or is it propaganda? Oh. Let me let you in on something. Do you remember Charles Manson? Yes. Now, he was part of our social circle in Laurel Canyon. The Beach Boys recorded a song he wrote. I think it was called Cease to Exist. Manson single-handedly destroyed the anti-war movement overnight. All that peace and love. Now, why do you suppose we would have anything to do with a serial killer? Like attracts like. Get smart. They're on to you. Why do you care about the little people? Because I am one. They want to be the beautiful people. No, they don't. And the people who think that they do just don't know the truth yet. All the world's a stage. And all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. <laughs> in the pines, in the pines, where the sun never shines, I'll shiver when the cold wind blows. There's a grave in the pines where the sun never shines. There's a grave that's shaded with pines. Meg, do you ever wonder why there are so many sad stories about the entertainment industry? Um, I don't know. Maybe the fame? Or the drugs? See, none are more hopelessly enslaved than those that falsely believe they are free. Oh, Gerda. Minds like that hardly exist anymore. So tragic. One always has a choice. Ahem. <clears throat> Do you like the new merch for Katie's film? The supernatural secrets of big business success. I love it. It's too bad she didn't die. Could have sold a lot of merch. How old are you? Wait, don't answer that. Last night 
In the pines, in the pines, where the sun never shines. Joe Boy? Shiver the whole night. Hey, Joe Boy, yo, you here? Alicia, what's up? I have a few questions about Katie's accident. You have a minute? Sure. If there's a fatality involved, the car goes to 11th Street. Is that still the case? Yeah, car's there now. The town impound. So we still have the car? For how long? Until they're done with the investigation. Who knows, man? It could be six weeks, it could be six years. So you could get me the car's GPS information, right? I'd have to ask the police for permission, but, you know, accident that bad, they probably already cut the battery. Could you check for me, please, and let me know? Sure. Thanks. Yeah. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. Yeah, it was really bad. It's a miracle Katie survived. I knew they were dead as soon as I got there. It's all the shoes. one I've ever seen. Maybe. People got killed. They always get knocked out of their shoes. It's weird. Never heard of that. Wonder why. You know, it's like the soul get taken right out of it. Thanks, Joe Boy. I appreciate it. Sure. Wait. So I'm sorry. How you doing? You okay? I'm not gonna say anything bad about Hamilton to you. That's a good <laughs> thing. You better not. And, uh... Better not say anything bad about our girl, either. Okay. No, I'm serious. Let me know. Hey, remember this? Wow, look at my hair. <laughs> that was seventh grade. Yeah. I remember that light blue sparkly sweater. <laughs> I don't think my mother kept one picture of me from middle school. Thanks for meeting me here. I try and stop by every day. It's beautiful back here. It's Katie's favorite place on earth. We had a great summer here. I just, um, I just closed the pool. I can't imagine how difficult this is for you and your family. You're all so close. You know, Katie's been pulling away from us for a while. What happened? People she surrounded herself with, they isolated her from us. The world doesn't work the way we think it does. Nothing is as it seems. What does that mean? Katie was getting uh, disillusioned with Hollywood. She told me she wanted to quit acting and go back to, uh, back to school. Did she say why? I pressed her at one point, and she said, the less I know, the better. Everything's a big secret with Katie. I don't understand. Why quit now when she's about to become a huge star? How do you walk away from that? Maybe you don't. Everything comes at a price. Katie getting involved with the wrong types of people? You could say that. Right after Katie was admitted to the hospital, I kept having these strange feelings, my intuition, I guess, that she wasn't safe. 
And then one day I pulled up in her driveway and caught someone breaking into the house. The window had already been smashed. Are you kidding? No. I had cameras installed the next day, and I have the police helping me keep an eye on the place. What do you think they were looking for? Peter, what do you think they were looking for? I think they were looking for this. What is it? Katie's diary. I see. Yeah, I want you to read it. It'll give you an idea of what my daughter's up against. In her last entry, she wrote about going to see a Violet? Oh, no. Violet reached out to me right after Katie's accident. She was the one who told me to collect all of Katie's personal things that might be lying around the house, especially the diary. Thank God I got here in time. I mean, without that, we have nothing. And Katie's memory might not be the same. You say that. We don't know. The doctors don't know. That's all we've got right now. That and Violet. Who's Violet? Well, it's not her real name. She doesn't go by her real name. Apparently, she's a child actress, and she's pretty well known. Can I talk to her? Alicia, as a friend, as Katie's friend, you have to understand what you're getting into before you go any further. This, this goes deep. I mean, deeper than you can imagine. If you write that article, you could be in the same danger as Katie. What else did Violet say? Things I'll never get over. Things I can't repeat. Children, abuse, torture. If you knew the truth, I mean, I, how the power structure really works, you wouldn't be able to sleep. I mean, these are people you know in, in the movies, in TV, politicians, people I once admired. Is Violet willing to talk to me? Yes. She might be risking her life in doing so. I understand. Can you give me her contact information? She'll contact you. Please, Alicia, she has to be able to trust you. Both of us have to be able to trust you. You know you can trust me, but she has to reach out soon. My boss is getting frustrated. I can arrange that. Are you okay? You seem frightened. Katie needs our help. And we need you, Alicia. By getting the whole story out in a, in a legitimate media outlet, she's safer. We all are. I mean, even if it's our own little small town newspaper. Nothing small anymore with the internet. And that's what we're hoping is true because we want the story to go viral. That is our goal. And Violet says she can help make that happen. Wow, okay. I just need to get my head around this. Because until now, I wasn't sure what Katie's story would be. Once I read the diary and talk to Violet, I'll get in touch with you. Peter, thank you for coming to me first. I won't let you down. Okay, I gotta, I gotta get going. I gotta get back to the hospital. Katie doesn't know how lucky she is to have such a supportive family. That is the biggest advantage in life. She knows. Thank you, Alicia. Friendship is sacred. Good luck, bad luck, who knows? Stronger yet, weaker grows. What are you doing? Waiting for Rusty. What are you doing? I've come to give Rusty my notes. I'll make sure he gets them. I'll wait. How's the story on the commemorative blanket going? Great. How's your story going? Great. I think I'm onto something big. Yeah, that's good. Hello. Hi, Rusty. Hi, Rusty. I just got a huge lead today. Jana, can you come back in about 15 minutes? That's fine. I just wanted to give you my report on the chamber meeting. Let me know what you think. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well. Bye, Gianna. What's that? Katie's diary. <laughs> Where'd you get it? Katie's dad. Anything interesting? Uh, yeah, to say the least. What does Peter think? About what? 
about the diary, why'd he give it to you? He wants me to read it and see if I can find anything new that might shed some light on things. And did you find anything new? The name Violet keeps popping up. I'm thinking about following up. What do you think? What do I think? <laughs> I don't know what I think. Have you noticed that Katie's accident isn't news anymore? Yeah, so it's just the news cycles have changed. I think you may have turned me into a conspiracy theorist. Facts are facts. You taught me that. <sighs> I'm spending way too much time thinking about this story. I have a lot of other work to do, and so do you. I want you to wrap this up. I just need a little bit more time so I can follow up with Violet. You're having second thoughts? I just, I want to proceed with caution. What do you mean? I mean that I have a responsibility to everyone who works here. I understand your concern. I wrote about drug gangs in Philadelphia, and it was scary. But I was doing my job. That's what journalists do. We tell the truth. I really think Violet is the missing link. All right. Let's talk about this later, OK? I have to return a call. Do you know what you do? I don't know what you mean. Oh, what a wondrous little actress you are. I don't act in real life. That would make me a psychopath, not an actress. What is it that you hope to gain? My freedom. Mm. Not possible. I have a modicum of self-respect left, and I am leaving with it. I will keep my word. I will promote this film. I will keep my mouth shut. Please, Lilith, let me go. You know I can't do that. I answer to a higher power. What does that mean? It means we own your influence. There's no going back. Do you know that power we gave you? We own that power. You said the magic words, Katie. You said you were willing to do anything. I was wrong. This anxiety you're feeling, Katie, is just the end of your old life and the beginning of your new one. And all that excitement can feel like nerves. I've seen it a thousand times. But take a rest. I'm going to have my personal driver take you home. And then you call me next week when you get back to New York. We'll decide on everything together. The premiere, the gown, the magazine covers, it's all here. Everything you ever wished for. You take a rest. You clear your head. How does that sound? Maybe you're right. Maybe I just need a break. And a good night's sleep. Goodbye, Katie. You're a lot taller in real life. What the hell? Do I know you? I don't know. Why are you here? I want to ask you something. What? I want to ask you what you hope to accomplish by writing that ridiculous article about Katie's accident.
Finding the truth? The truth. <laughs> you don't even tell yourself the truth. What's that supposed to mean? Raised by a single mom. She pretty much ignored you. Never told you who your real father was. You've been lying to yourself from a very young age, Alicia. What are you saying? However, your work ethic, it impresses me. That's what got you to the Philadelphia drum. You met a nice man. You got married. Then you resented him once you found out that you were pregnant. Miscarriage. That's the official story. You started sleeping with your boss. Your husband left. Things didn't work out with the boss. They never do. And just like that, all of it was gone. Get out! You begged for your job back at the Hamilton Herald. Rusty, he was nice enough to give you the job. A second chance. You know, it's funny. Life has a certain way of nudging us back to where we belong. So why don't you want me to write the article? Mm, I don't think it's going to make a difference. Then why are you here? Well, think twice before you cast pearls before swine. We have them so confused that if I were to tell them the snow is black, they would believe the snow is black. What do you work for? Call it a think tank. I don't believe this is happening. Your belief is not required to make it true. You are not stupid, are you, Alicia? You just can't fathom the enormity of it all. What do you mean? Well, that's nice. A little relic from your stint in Alcoholics Anonymous. My grandfather gave it to me. You have family with something so valuable to pass along to you? Perhaps they're not all wolves. No, some of us were fighters. Hmm. I do like seeing Jesus nailed to the cross like that. I really do. I think one of those should be in every Christian home, don't you? One should be reminded daily of what happens to the truth and the light on this planet. Who said you? <laughs> if you don't know your enemy, Sun Tzu says you should not engage in battle. I think that's the problem with the world, don't you? What's that? I think so. I had to call you. I'm sorry I didn't get dressed. <laughs> Someone doesn't want us to write this story. Did he try to hurt you? No, but he broke into my house when I was in the shower. Did he threaten you? Not in a direct way. Jesus. I think we should get the police involved. No, why? He's not going to stop us from writing this story. I'm not worried about the story. It's Katie's people. They're just trying to control the narrative. Are you sure about that? I have something I want to talk to you about. I'll be right back. It's just in the bedroom. I know you have reservations about reaching out to Violet, but after tonight, it just makes sense. Really? Yes. Joe Boy called me today. He couldn't get the GPS. We're at a big dead end. This is all we got. That guy said I needed to know my enemy, and maybe we need to look into this. He said that? Yes. Come on. What do you think? 
I think everyone is actually safer if I write this story, if I put it out there. Even Peter says so. All right. Call her. Just promise me you won't meet her or anyone else by yourself. I promise. Are you sure you want me to get the police involved? I'm sure. What's wrong? I just... I don't have a good feeling about this. Let's have a glass of wine. It's been such a crazy week. Let's just talk about it. I should go. You sure? Yeah. Call me later if you talk to Violet. I want to know what she says. Rusty, stay with me. Have a glass of wine. I, um, I got a lot of work to catch up on, you know, and, I mean, this thing's just, it's just so troubling, and I've never had to deal with anything like this before, and, I don't know how to help you. I'll be home on my, call me if you need me. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Do you live here? So, uh, you want to ask some questions about Katie Morrow? Yes. And you're a journalist? Yes. Can I see some credentials? Hamilton Herald. Yes. I also worked for the Philly Drum. I was an investigative reporter. Okay. <clears throat> what do you want to know? Why your name is all over Katie's diary. Are we were friends? How do you know her? We met at a party at Ceiling Mansion. She mentions that place in her diary. Yeah, Katie and I were required to attend certain mixers there. Why? It's very hard to get anywhere in the entertainment industry if you don't attend those parties. I don't understand. If you want the fame, you have to play the game. It's all about owning influence, and you can't be owned unless you've been compromised. Compromised? Yes. The people who arrange these parties, they know exactly what they're doing. What about those who attend them? I would say everybody knows, and everybody is complicit. How does General Black fit into all this? Certain intelligence agencies work very closely with some people in the entertainment industry. Certain projects, it's propaganda. Molding public opinion. It's all about controlling the public's perception of reality. So why would he put it all out there in a book? <laughs> they don't even try to hide it anymore. And General Black is also responsible for blackmailing a lot of the entertainers. 
why go through all that trouble to compromise entertainers? Well, the entertainment industry has a lot of influence over people. It's like a spell. Think about it. Ask yourself this question. Could so many people be so in line on so many issues, statistically speaking? Well, they certainly push an agenda, but no one with a job takes it seriously. <laughs> you sure about that? How is John DeBauer involved? His family owns Sealing Mansion. That's where Katie was on the night of the accident. Where is Sealing Mansion located? Cossert Avenue, the Pennsylvania-Delaware border, where the trees grow away from the sun. Uh, the DeBauer family also owns an island on the in the Caribbean. It's where most of the blackmailing takes place. Presidents have been to that island. It's sick what goes on there. Has Katie been compromised? Yeah. There was also a man named Henry Lee Lucas. Yeah, I know Lucas. He used to hang out at the mansion. Do you think Lucas was in that car to hurt Katie? I think he was there to kill Katie. You can't just walk away when you're about to be handed that much fame. So Katie wanted out and the powers that rule over that industry wouldn't allow it. Exactly. And they were going to make an example out of her. What about you? More about me. Did you walk away? I was a child in this business. No business for a child. And I held up my end of the bargain until now. I'm not afraid anymore. What's the end game? I mean, the entertainment industry, working with intelligence agencies, pushing a certain agenda, for what? You're living it. These people serve dark state. They've sold their souls to it. Dark state? Where they will reign in hell rather than serve in heaven. What does that mean? They want a one world government run by global elites and unelected bureaucrats. They're currently depopulating to make it all a bit more manageable. Goodbye, America. Goodbye, freedom. These people believe in slavery. Oh, I feel like Americans wouldn't let that happen. They already have. Why speak out now? Dark State is about to make its move. The moment of truth is now, and every single one of us is going to have to make a decision. You can choose to be in service to others, or you can choose to be in service to yourself. Light versus dark. Game on. Are you doing this because of Katie? Uh, you should go. Do you have the information you need? So go write your story, if you have the guts. Aren't you afraid, living out here all alone? If Dark State is as powerful as you say they are, why speak out now? Nobody gets out of here alive. I would. So if I looking for the address? Yes. According to her, Katie and the boys were at a house party on Cossert Avenue, the Pennsylvania-Delaware border. And guess who owns the house? Who? The DeBauer family. That's right. From Delaware. So we're just taking a ride. No knocking on doors. No way. If it's owned by the DeBauers, we won't even be able to get close. Probably tons of security. I'm just really curious, aren't you? We finally know where Katie was the night of her accident, and it happens to be at a house owned by the one and only DeBauer family. And it's only an hour and 13 minutes from here. It's so strange. Let's get this over with. Tonight we celebrate. Promise? Promise.
hold on. This is newsworthy. Sitting on your shoulder, this is not your four leaf clover. Something heavy's taking over. Something should have told you this was bad luck. Yeah, this is bad luck. Devil sitting on your shoulder, this is not your four leaf clover. Something heavy's taking over. Something should have told you this was bad luck. But this is bad luck. This is bad luck. Watch out! Oh my god! Right here. Hello? Hello? Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy. You're on private property. I was only trying to help. Shut up. So, this is Alicia Gazara. In the flesh and blood. You know why I brought you here? I brought you here because I have a feeling you and I may be able to work together. Doing what? What's your superpower? I can write. The pen is mightier than the sword. Alicia, do you know what a lie suggests? It suggests that the person you are lying to doesn't deserve to know the truth. Okay. The unwashed masses have successfully dumbed themselves down to the level of beasts. And they deserve every fucking lie we tell them. I resent that I breathe the same air as them. True. Oh, I like you so much, Alicia. So I ask you again, why are you here and not in that field with Rusty? You want me to work for you? You might say that. The media does more than inform and entertain. It shapes public opinion. That's real power. That's what our programming does. People think what we tell them to think. Why do you think we need to do that? I'm not sure. No person with a strong moral compass seeking truth can be brainwashed. So, 
We take responsibility for those who refuse to take responsibility for themselves. The unwashed masses. It is their collective and willful ignorance that is enslaving humanity. Not a few people at the top. I agree. Will you help us? What would I get? Then I ask you, what do you want? What are your deepest desires? Let me ask you this. Where are we? When the light bringer was cast out of heaven for refusing to serve mankind, where did he fall? Earth. Now, I ask you, where are we? Who do we serve? Alicia, I am giving you an opportunity to align yourself with the god of this world. And if you do, you will have anything you've ever wanted. What do you want? You have to say it, Alicia. I want a career as a top writer in the most prestigious magazine in New York City. I want everything Katie had and more. The parties, the fame, the access. I want it all. I want to be rich. And I want respect. I worked hard to get where I am. I want the respect my family never gave me. That's what I want. Respect. And what would you be willing to do to get it? Anything. Say it. I'm willing to do anything. That's all I needed to hear. I'll make a few phone calls on your behalf. Thank you. Mm. What about Rusty? Oh, that's all taken care of. I'll be in touch. Shall I take her on the tour? Absolutely. Free will is a beautiful thing. So help. Help me. Her path. I can't. Rusty's still alive. Check his phone.
but I was given free reign all weekend. This is amazing. Look at this view. <laughs> oh, toast. Uh. To Alicia, congratulations on your new job at Hudson Magazine and to your first interview on location at the Cannes Film Festival. And to you being given this house for the weekend of partying and inviting us to celebrate with you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> you sure know how to make a comeback. New yeah. York City and the French Riviera. <laughs> oh, this is good champagne. Ooh. It is good. Drink up, there's more where that came from. True story, the bar is stocked. The good life. <laughs> Who would have thought just a few months ago you would be the big star coming out of town? I was working on some things, I just never mentioned it. Everybody is talking about you. Yesterday, I heard you were the new editor-in-chief at Catwalk Magazine. You know Hamilton. What they don't know, they make up. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty would be so proud. I can't believe they found the carjacker. Yeah, it's about time. Hey, have any of you read Katie's tweets lately? Crazy. Literally. Honestly, what do you think is going on with her? Brain damage. Lisa. I'm not the only one saying it. I talked to her after the accident. She seems fine. Okay. But her tweets are creepy, and she wasn't like that before the accident. Head injuries are serious. Could a head injury change your personality like that? It's possible. I heard she's back on drugs. I don't believe that. I never believed Katie did drugs, and I never will. Yeah, she drank, but every time I see her, she's jogging around town completely clear-eyed. And then I read that she's back in rehab, which is totally untrue because she is sitting right next to me at Cassiano's. I don't know how the media gets away with that. Oh, here we go. She has a whole bunch of tweets. Oh my God, this is so sad. Someone get this girl a tinfoil hat. Maybe I'll get her one. She had so many opportunities and she squandered them. Spoiled little brats usually do that. Can't get arrested now. Alicia, that's harsh. She worked hard. She worked her way to New York, just like you did. Her parents paid for her college free and clear. Supported her financially in New York City while she went on auditions all day or whatever she did. She didn't work. And paid for her apartment. Do you know where I'd be right now if I had that? She does have talent, though. She made it on Broadway and in Hollywood because of that. Not because her parents paid for her apartment. You're right. It wasn't just her parents. I'm sure she had a little help from the casting couch as well. You really think the world is rigged, don't you? I know it is. Girls, we're here to celebrate. Listen, I like Katie. I always have. I wish her well. Here's to Katie. Without her, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> oh, I had a house on the beach. I would never leave. Oh, she tweeted. Katie just tweeted. I'm going to read it. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free by choice. We are as free as we are moral. As our morality increases, our freedom increases. As our morality decreases, our freedom decreases. I worship truth. Truth dictates the quality of your life. It's valuable. The less truth you have in your life, the more you will suffer. Stop lying to yourself. The dark state will fail. The war is on. You cannot stand up against the force of creation and win. Godspeed.